let's fast forward to the 91 Survivor Series. What do you remember about the week with you winning the title and then the decision to give it right back uh, on this Tuesday in Texas? What, what, what was that week like? Well, that was, I mean, that was crazy. Like, so, I mean, it started out bad and, and just it progressively got worse. Like, um, you know, Hogan claims that I heard him uh, on the tombstone during the pay-per-view, right? Um, so I'm thinking to myself, like, I didn't find out till Tuesday. I knew there was going to be another pay-per-view, but I didn't know that I was, you know, I was going to drop the belt back and any, what was going on. I mean, that came up out of nowhere, but I kind of figured like, Oh, okay. I, you know, I, maybe it's cause he's telling everybody that I heard him, you know, and you know, Hulk was still the golden goose at the time. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is, you know, they're going to take this off of me because they can't trust me or, or, or whatnot. It really wasn't explained to me what, what the the reasoning was behind it and by the way what a different era this is for you because you've been the locker room leader for so long the conscience of locking all these nicknames but back then you're still a relatively new guy so how do you even handle when people say that with hogan saying you heard him? well fortunately like, like i was devastated um and i was i mean the whole deal was a, it was a, it was a setup from the whole get-go right so back then you know, we would usually show up noon, you know, on a TV or pay-per-view day. We show up at the, at the arena around noon, one o'clock. You know, Hogan would roll in about four or five. So I remember getting there about, about noon, and Hogan was already there. And I'm walking down the Red hall. Red flag number one. Red flag number <laughs> one, right? So uh, he, goes, he goes, hey, kid, uh, can, can I talk to you, right? So – we go into one of the locker rooms, into the shower, right? That's whenever, that's where all the business was always done back in the day. You went into the shower, whether it was to fight, settle, whatever score, it always happened in the shower. So he's telling me, he goes, hey, I got this neck injury. <clears throat> he says, I'm really nervous about taking your finish. And I was like, I was like, Hulk, believe me. I said, I will protect you. Like, I mean, I pride myself on not hurting people. And and I promise you, I will have you so tight that there's no way possible that you're going to hurt your neck. So, you know, with that, we went on about our business. Every point during the day, I'd pass him in the hall or whatnot. You know, I'd get the, you know, like, remember about my neck, right? So that's all I got all day it was, was, you know, my neck. So, so we go into the finish. <clears throat> We go into the finish, Flair comes down, slides the chair down. I pick him up. And when I tell you I had I had the brother secure, <laughs> he was secure. Boom. I give I give him the tombstone. As soon as my knees hit, I hear, oh, oh. You, got me, you got me, brother. <laughs> my like, neck and my back. My I'm neck like, and my back. Yeah, I am just like, how on how I'm like, I'm, you know, you have all these, like I'm what, 20. I was 24, 25 years old, and, you know, I just, I just crushed Hulk Hogan, right? That's, that's what's going through my head. Like, they gave me this opportunity. They gave me the chance to run with the ball, and I just hurt the golden goose. So I'm just, I'm just devastated, mortified, right? So they get Hogan out of the ring, and, you know, the, I get the belt, and Paul Bear and I are doing our stuff. So, you know, I go backstage, and um, – I go backstage and at where I was asking, where's Hulk at? Right. And he's always laying on Vince's office, office floor. So I go in there, you know, he's laid out on the floor, and, you know, he's, oh, he's, you know, he's carrying on and like, I'm going in to check on him, but then uh, here come the paramedics and stuff. So here me and kayfabe, right. So I go behind a wall um, with Shane, me and Shane are behind the wall and I'm having to, you know, listen to, you know, can you feel this? Can you do that? And then I hear somebody get my wife and kids on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, oh, are you? Sh oh, I mean, so you, you can only imagine, right? Like, I don't know what the hell's going on other than the fact that I just heard the golden goose. Um, 
you know, Shane's right there telling me, he's like, Mark, he goes, his head wasn't anywhere close to touching that mat. And I'm like, no, man, I, I just couldn't hear it. Like, I was like, no, man, I, I heard him. I, I, I don't know what, you know, I was just, I couldn't put a thought together. I just thought I'd killed him. And um, so, and we didn't have access back then to, to watch things back right away like we do now. So I didn't see it until Tuesday in Texas. Because the next day I was, I can, uh, I think the next day I was in Hamilton, Ontario, defending the title against uh, Davy Boy Smith. Or something. you know, I was right. We're gone because there's no Monday Night Raw. Yeah, there point. was no Monday Night Raw yet, right. and we had house shows. So I finally didn't got to see you know. Now, but by now, a lot of the boys had come up to me and they're like shaking their head, like his head never got anywhere close to the mat. And you watch it back you know, you can tell his head never touched. And uh, so uh, now I'm in this precarious situation. Like, you know, I'm still, I'm still a greenhorn, right? I mean, and now I've got to confront, I've got to confront, you know, the face of wrestling, the biggest draw, you know, ever. And now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do here. Like, uh, I mean, I've, as a man, I got to know what the hell, but I also know that it's, it's risking my professional career, um, you know, and at that point, everybody's, you know, everybody's so paranoid too about their position and their spots and you don't hurt the top guys and you don't hurt anybody, but you know how that works. And I finally, I, I, I got to San Antonio and uh, I was like, uh, Terry, I, I watched it back. Um, your head, uh, your head never hit. He's like, well, brother, what it was was you had me so tight that when we came down, I had nowhere to move. And that's what, that's what jammed my neck because I couldn't move at all. <laughs> you were too, too tight. Seatbelt was on too tight. Got it. it was too yeah. tight. And, and at that point, then I was like, okay. Then I knew, you know, I was like, okay. I, I kind of realized, okay, I know what you're all about. And that's all I needed, you know. I mean, but I got, we're going to, you know, we're going to fight him or that wasn't. That well, was so, so, this, so this is the perfect segue. And I didn't know we'd get there from this conversation. What, what did your relationship, what was it like with Hogan over the years? He's, because from that point on, right, from 91, when you're becoming the man on, his, his, he, his position as a fixture fades, you know, yeah. as the years go on. By 94, you know, we know that the, him and, him, Brett, Yoko deal wasn't the same Hogan. It wasn't quite the same. He's gone. Right. So over those years when he's coming in and out and he comes back years later, and now at that point it's really your locker room, what was your relationship like with Hogan? You know what? I always looked at it like I, I, from where I was at that point to where I was at the beginning, I was in a completely different spot. So I didn't have to carry a grudge. I, I, I treated him with the respect that I think that, for what he did for the business, he deserved. So I treated him that way. I was not overly friendly, but I did, you know, if he was in the building, I always made sure to say hello and engage him in conversation. But, you know, I've always, like I said, from that Tuesday in Texas, when I got that answer, I, I knew all I needed to know about him. And, um, you know, and, and that's the way I always then, you know, my radar was always up anytime that I had to, you know, interact with him. But I, but I dealt with him. I dealt in a professional manner with him. Did you, but you took some pleasure when, when you guys were doing your, your thing much later and he was not able to get the motorcycle to drive at all. And he just had to get off and run. Uh, I laughed <laughs> a little bit on that. <laughs> I, 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 I would be lying if I didn't say I got, I didn't get out of that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.